The territorial dispute over the Essequibo region by Venezuela dates back over a century. Although the Cooperative Republic of Guyana has de facto administered the territory since 1966, Venezuela regards it as an integral part of its territory and claims it as its own based on the principle of Udi Posaditis Juris inherited from the former General Captaincy of Venezuela in 1777. The disputed territory is of great strategic importance due to its abundant natural resources. In this video, we will discuss the historical and economic significance of Essequibo for Venezuela and how asserting its sovereignty over the territory could benefit the country. The territorial dispute between Venezuela and Guyana over the Essequibo region is a complex and long-standing issue that has generated diplomatic and political tensions between the two countries. The origins of the discussion about the sovereignty of the Essequibo territory date back to the colonial era. Initially, it was under Spanish control. Later, it became part of the General Captaincy of Venezuela when it was founded in 1777, and later it was integrated into the new Republic of Venezuela from 1811 for a brief period of time. When Venezuela definitively became independent from Gran Colombia in 1830, its eastern border was defined by the Essequibo River. However, in 1814, the Dutch ceded their rights over present-day Guyana and Suriname to Great Britain, leaving the western border of this territory unclear. Therefore, in 1840 the British appointed explorer Robert Scomberg to chart it. It is at this point that the current territorial dispute began. Shortly after the start of the exploration, the controversial Scomberg Line was announced, claiming nearly 80,000 additional square kilometers west of the Essequibo River, within the territory that Venezuela recognized as its own. Thus, in 1841 Venezuela made its first formal claim to Great Britain for the territory, after denouncing an invasion of English settlers in its domains, seeking the support of the United States to denounce the incursion of the British in the Essequibo. As a result, the Americans decided to intervene in the border dispute in 1895 under the Monroe Doctrine, which claimed an America for the Americans. Following the decision of the United States, the British Empire accepted in 1897 the creation of a treaty to submit the dispute to international arbitration. Venezuela's intention was to claim the territory as its own based on the principle of Udi Posaditis Juris, an international law principle that guarantees states the power to administer territories that historically belonged to them. The argument of Venezuela was based on the inclusion of this territory under the sovereignty of the Captaincy General of Venezuela in 1777. However, the so-called Paris Arbitration Award of 1899 was resolved in favor of Great Britain, and the Scomberg Line was established as the border between the two territories. But in 1949, the discovery of papers compromising the impartiality of Russian jurist Friedrich Martins in the 1899 trial led Caracas to denounce the ruling before the UN. In 1966, Venezuela and the United Kingdom, which at that time administered the so-called British Guiana, signed the agreement known as the Geneva Agreement, committing themselves to finding a negotiated solution to the dispute. From a geographical point of view, the Essequibo territory is a region located in the northeast of South America, with an area of 159,542 square kilometers and abundant natural resources, including oil, gas, gold, diamonds, bauxite, and timber. The region is bordered to the north by the Atlantic Ocean, to the east by Guyana, to the south by Brazil, and to the west by Venezuela. Although Guyana has de facto control over the territory since 1966, Venezuela considers it a zone to be delimited and claims it as part of its historic territory due to its strategic importance and the natural resources it possesses. Venezuela's position is based on the 1966 Geneva Agreement, an international treaty that establishes a mechanism for the peaceful resolution of the dispute and obliges the parties to refrain from taking actions that may complicate or aggravate the situation in the region. However, Guyana maintains that the treaty grants full sovereignty over the Essequibo territory in its favor, while Venezuela argues that the treaty only establishes a mechanism for the delimitation of the territory. In recent years, due to the discovery of oil deposits in the still undelimited maritime space of the Essequibo, the government of Guyana has been granting concessions to large transnational companies for the exploitation of oil, 
which has caused vigorous protests from the Venezuelan government. Throughout the years, Venezuela has maintained that the Essequibo is part of its historic territory and that its control is vital for its security and economic development. On the other hand, Guyana has asserted that the region belongs to it and that its exploitation is crucial for its economic development. Thus, the position of both countries has focused on the defense of their national interests, which has made it difficult to find a peaceful solution to the controversy. In the international arena, the territorial dispute has been the subject of discussion in various multilateral organizations, such as the Organization of American States and the Caribbean Community, commonly known as CARICOM or CC. More recently, the dispute has been brought to the International Court of Justice, which declared itself competent in the case. In this sense, the international community has urged both countries to find a peaceful and lasting solution to the controversy, which respects the rights and needs of both parties. If Venezuela were to exercise effective sovereignty over the Essequibo, it could harness the natural resources of the area to boost its economy. For instance, the exploitation of oil and gas in the region could significantly increase the country's energy production and generate considerable revenue for the government. Venezuela could also tap into the mineral resources of the region, such as gold and bauxite, to bolster its mining sector. The wood from the Essequibo could also be used for making furniture and other wood products, which could help to boost the country's manufacturing industry. In addition, sovereignty over the Essequibo could also allow Venezuela to control navigation and trade on the Essequibo River, which is an important source of water for the region. The country could use the Essequibo River as a transportation route to export its products and could also take advantage of the region's enormous tourism potential to boost this sector. Therefore, the river would become the main transportation route to reach the most inhospitable regions, which contain one of the most biodiverse ecosystems on the continent. It's important to consider that sovereignty over the Essequibo also comes with significant costs. Venezuela would have to invest in infrastructure to exploit the region's natural resources, including the construction of roads and bridges. They would also have to deal with the environmental and social challenges associated with natural resource exploitation in the region. Another important challenge is the opposition of Guyana and the international community to Venezuela's claim over the Essequibo. The dispute has led to diplomatic tensions between the two countries and has drawn the attention of the international community. Venezuela would have to negotiate with Guyana and seek a peaceful and fair solution to the dispute in order to exercise its sovereignty over the territory. On the other hand, a loss of the Essequibo would also have an impact on Venezuela's foreign policy. The territorial conflict with Guyana has been one of the main concerns of Venezuelan foreign policy in recent decades. In this sense, its resolution against Venezuela would be seen as a defeat in the international community, weakening the country's position in the region. Another negative consequence is that Venezuela would be severely impaired in its maritime rights, as it would be left without access to the sea on the Atlantic facade. Therefore, it is essential that the country continue working to defend its interests and seek a peaceful solution to the conflict. In summary, the Essequibo is a territory of strategic and economic importance for Venezuela due to the natural resources it holds. If Venezuela were to exercise its sovereignty over the Essequibo, it could harness these resources to boost its economy and improve its position in the region. However, it would also face significant challenges, including the need to invest in infrastructure and deal with opposition from Guyana and the international community. Ultimately, Venezuela would require a peaceful and fair solution to resolve the territorial dispute between the two countries. The resolution of the territorial conflict in the Essequibo is vital for the well-being of the region and peace in the international community. It is essential for the governments of Venezuela and Guyana to continue to dialogue and work together to find a peaceful and lasting solution to the Essequibo controversy. Additionally, it is necessary to respect existing international agreements such as the 1966 Geneva Agreement and promote dialogue and cooperation in the region in order to ensure stability and sustainable economic development. Do you think that the Essequibo belongs to Venezuela? Leave your comments and suggestions below. If you enjoyed our content, don't forget to like and subscribe to all notifications by clicking the bell icon. See you next time.